Hi, I'm Mitch Reed with MitchReedMusicLessons.com. Thanks for joining me on iFiddleMagazine.com. And one of the things I'd like to talk about in this article is um, how in Cajun country and Creole country down here in southwest Louisiana, how coffee and fiddling are such a big part of the culture. And uh, when I was a kid, and I started learning from old fiddlers, started going to their houses to visit them. One of the first things we would do is make a pot of coffee. Or the old lady of the house, the old woman of the house would make a pot. And then when we were in the living room, you know, beginning to play tunes, she would bring out a tray of uh, hot black coffee with a cup of milk and a cup of sugar. And she would hold the tray out in front of you and you could, you know, personalize your cup of coffee in whichever way you wanted. Um, and that was a big part of going to Ken Ray Fontenot's house. We always started it off with coffee and then we played tunes and then more coffee. And uh, Ken Ray was really old school and when we get in his living room, you know, he would just holler out, you know, coffee! And his wife would bring uh, the tray with the coffee and the cream and the sugar. So it was pretty funny, just the old, the old days, you know. Um, I used to visit another fiddler uh, who I talk about a lot. His name was Adna Ortigo. And he had this old time coffee pot that I think had belonged to his parents. And he would make a type of coffee called uh, sweetened in the pot. And what he would do is he would, um, you know, when he would put his coffee grinds in the filter, he would also put a teaspoon of sugar. And then when you pour his hot water through the coffee, the sugar would melt into the coffee. So you had sweet coffee no matter what, whether you liked it or not. <laughs> That's what you got at his house. And, uh, but he was a real special guy. And he, same thing, you know, he would make, we'd make coffee, then we'd play fiddle tunes and talk about, you know, old fiddle players, stories, um, the culture, how things are changing, how things used to be. But coffee, again, always uh, the biggest part of, uh, you know, what was involved or what got us going, what sparked, you know, things off, you know, with playing tunes. And, uh, you know, maybe even after playing tunes for a couple of hours, you get tired and you need a break. So we make more coffee, you know, and uh, it's just a big part of our culture, probably from the French and the Creoles and uh, Africans and things like that. Um, so... Um, yeah, so much coffee down here. I mean, Beausoleil even wrote a song about coffee. They call it the coffee song. Great uh, song. So um, it's, it's a huge part of our culture. Um, and uh, yeah, when there's no coffee in the house, um, somebody's got to go get some at the store. Uh, in the old days, they used to actually buy the beans and roast the beans in the house grind it in there. So as soon as you walked in, the, the, the whole house smelled so good with coffee. Um, but even for me, when I teach lessons, um, one of the first things I do is I find out, you know, my, which uh, students I have that are coffee drinkers and I always have a pot of coffee ready for them when they get here for their lesson because it's just a big part of it. And sometimes I end up drinking too much coffee. I'm 45 now and I have high blood pressure and Sometimes, you know, I get a little carried away with it, but, um, but it's okay because it's who I am as a Cajun, you know, it's, it's, and my whole family <clears throat> were huge coffee drinkers. Uh, my father played accordion, my brother played accordion, and on Saturdays we would, you know, that was like our music days, and first thing we would do, my brother would make a big pot of coffee. Of course, he would drink the whole pot himself first, then we'd make another pot, and then he'd get out the accordion and sometimes we'd play records and um, I'd get out the fiddle and we'd have a jam, but it was always a pot of coffee going on. Um, don't get me wrong, the Cajuns like whiskey too. So they would at night, later at night, you know, when the kids are in bed and stuff, then the, the whiskey would come out, you know, but uh, sometimes even, sometimes no whiskey at night, sometimes just coffee, especially if you had a, a long drive back home. Um, I used to go visit Mr. Artigo and he would make homemade wine. We'd drink a little bit of that, but it, because he knew we were getting ready to get on the road and drive maybe 30 minutes to an hour, he would make us a pot of coffee and then we would hit the road. 
So just wanted to talk a little bit about Cajun music, Cajun culture, Creole culture as well. And uh, um, when I say Creoles, I mean, you know, black French speaking people, Cajuns are the descendants of the Acadians from Nova Scotia who came down to Louisiana. Um, when I learned Creole fiddle from Calvin Cartier, I, the coffee they made was amazing. And they, what they would do, his wife would take the coffee grinds, and it was always dark roast uh, Colombian coffee. And she would grind it really fine and put it just in the bottom of a pot and then put water in there and boil it. So almost like a Turkish style coffee, you know, she would boil the grinds in the water and then turn the heat off, let the grind set, or like we say in French, the grimis, let them go to the bottom, and then just dip your cup in there, and then you have really nice black coffee, strong black coffee. Um, so it's such a big part of our culture and our fiddle music, and I just can't even imagine what it would have been like growing up and playing tunes and not drinking coffee. I mean, we could have drank tea, but that would have been a whole nother experience. <laughs> Just wanted to share uh, that with you on this um, article was how coffee and fiddles go together in Cajun country. Thank you.